Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel where we sew pretty costumes and things. I'm going to be making Toby a Nandor costume from the TV show What We Do in the Shadows. Then I am going to make myself a Nadja costume from What We Do in the Shadows. My compassionate deadline for this project is Dragon Con, which is the first weekend of September. Today we will be focusing on this tunic that Nandor wears here. As per usual, we are not going to be doing like scream accurate, just kind of close enough to resemble Nandor. So let's head on over to the table to discuss our plan for this project. All right, so this is the pattern I plan to use. Right now, what I'm going to do is make a mock-up out of this black cotton that I have because I want to make the mock-up potentially reusable as the lining. What I plan to do is actually make this skirt portion a little shorter. So I want to make the skirt portion end about here. Also, these sleeves have this little button detail. We're not going to do that. We're not going to add cuffs and we're not going to have this shoulder piece. So it'll just be a front, a back, and this. And then once I've gotten that mocked up and fitted to Toby, we can decide on how to do the neckline. I think it has a collar, but I have to look at my reference image again. So if that, me that means I might have to drape a collar or I might be able to find something in my stash and make a collar that'll go with this. But let's just get this base going. Let's do this. Okay, so the changes I'm gonna make is I'm gonna actually take this shoulder seam and have it kind of come angular here because this is really baggy up at the neck. I am gonna take the sleeves in quite a bit because we don't really need the style of sleeve that this pattern had. We are just gonna take it in. Uh, and then if I wanna take it in more once it's on him before I like finish the actual shell, we can do that. And then I'm gonna take in quite a bit actually in the back. It basically is at least a size too big, but that could just be because they have a lot of ease. I know that these patterns like to have extra ease. So if you can see, this is how much we're taking in. And then once I make this in the outer shell, we'll just use this back one to kind of line up with everything. I kind of wish this tucked in just a tiny bit more, but I think it'll be fine. Okay. Okay, I've just marked up the mock-up and now I am ready for the next step. So today we were able to make a complete mock-up and do a fitting, um, which means tomorrow we get to start the real thing. Yay! Uh, so I will see you tomorrow. <sighs> Hello friends. We're back. Today we are gonna rip apart that mock-up and then we're gonna transfer it onto our regular fabric and we'll talk about that once we get there. And then we're gonna sew up the lining, the outer fabric, sew them together and get ourselves ready to do some of the detail stuff on the front. I'm still unsure about a collar, I'm gonna be honest. So we're gonna get there when we get there. He does have a collar, but it looks red. It looks like it's a completely different thing than everything else. It also looks like he has a white collar with like a ruffle thing on it. So I don't know. But I think the first thing I should do is just get this ripped up, figure out all the fabric stuff, and then make our life decisions based off of how it's coming along.
Alex and I are out antiquing and I think I found the perfect fabric for Nandor for his tunic. I think I'm gonna get it. We are not going for historically accurate or screen accurate. Screen, screen accurate. accurate. We're not going for screen accurate. And even though his is black, uh, I think this brown will look really nice because I'm gonna do like a red versus a brown cape. So I'm gonna get it. It's $15 for this whole thing. It's at least two yards, so we're gonna do the damn thing. Okay, so this is all the fabric I have, which means we're gonna play Tetris. I know that grain lines are important and I know that pattern matching is super cool. I'm not gonna worry about any of that. We're just gonna worry about getting all of our pieces on this cut of fabric, so yeah. Internet, please don't get mad at me. We're doing the thing. We're just gonna make it work, okay? Cool. Okay, so that was way easier than I thought. I still have all this over here, um, but yeah, awesome. Look at that. They're all on there. I do not like the troll floor life. I will not be subscribing to this again in the near future. Thank you. That is my thought. Okay, so I am gonna be ending sewing on this early today because my books arrived, Oh yeah. And I need to package these up and get them sent to the people that pre-ordered signed copies. And with that being said, now these are available to order on my website. So if you would like a signed copy of my book, Cosplay Foundations, this is it. <laughs> if you would like a signed copy of this book, I will link it below signed copies from my website come with a complimentary petticoat pattern that is not available in this book as well as a five by seven print and obviously they are signed okay so today we got a lot done i obviously cut the fabric out and i had enough so that's great and then i got some of the sewing done so we're on like a good trajectory for getting this done this week. So yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Ooh. All right, so it's actually been a couple days. I needed to do some admin stuff and now we're back. Uh, today I am going to hopefully finish the tunic. What I have left to do is sew the outer shell to the lining bit and then attach the sleeves. Once that's done, we can kind of draft up the design that we want for all the buckles and we can attach the buckles. Nothing super fancy. I still haven't decided about the collar. I also realized I have two 18th century men's like white blousey shirts that I've made for Toby in the past that I might see like how that looks underneath this so that we don't have to make anything new and we can just use what we already have. But we will figure that out when we do the fitting of this at the end of the video. And if I hate it or none of it works, maybe next video when we work on the cloak, we will add something or maybe I'll just whip something up. We'll figure it out though. So let's jump right into pressing the sleeve seams because I am 100% sure I did not want to do that at the end of the day two days ago three days ago so let's get into sleeves and start putting the sleeves together All right, so now I need to plan the little belt buckles that are at the front of his tunic. And I have my little ruler. I got an upholstery vinyl from Joanne Fabrics that I'm gonna use for this. And I just got an eighth of a yard because I don't need that much of it. And then I got these little 
belt buckle thingies. These were like $4 a piece. <laughs> These were more expensive than all of the fabric in this combined. So anyway, but these look good enough and I'm going to now use a piece of paper to kind of math slash sketch out this little design that's gonna go on the front here. And then I will use my template from my paper, cut it out on this and heat and bond it down and sew it. So I'll show you all of that as I do it. Since vinyl is kind of sticky, there are a few things that you can do to help get it through your machine easier. The first is you could use a walking foot or even a Teflon foot. I don't have either of those feet for the M7, so an alternative, it would be to add tape to the bottom of the presser foot. For some reason, the tape trick didn't work for me because the tape that I have isn't exactly smooth. It's kind of tacky itself. So then I tried using my zipper foot and it worked great. I also tested out using a piece of paper and that worked really well too. Although then I had to like rip the paper out at the end. Okay, so because I don't want to use pins in this vinyl because um, it'll leave a hole and I can't exactly use wonder clips to clip this where I need it placed, we are gonna use a double-sided sticky hotness. This is Mighty Fuse. I've used it in videos before, but you could easily use something like Heat and Bond or any other type of fusible goodness. Now, the thing with this is I'm not really using it for a permanent hold because I am gonna be stitching it down because that's how his looks. So we're not worried too much about perfection here. Now I am, I did put down some cotton underneath because I'm about to press on top of this and it's gonna heat it up and the glue is gonna get everywhere and I don't want it on my ironing mat even though I'm going to buy a new one soon. I keep saying that, but I will do it. And I'm just gonna hold my iron on my pieces, I don't know, for five to seven seconds. And then we're just gonna let that cool and I will take it off, trim it, and repeat the process on the jacket here in a minute. Hello, Eva. There. Hello, Eva. Does Daddy look funny? Does Daddy look funny? Do I look funny? Do I look funny, Eva? Do I look yeah. funny? Look at you. Okay. Eva, you want to dance? Okay. <laughs> Gamo! <laughs> there she is. There's there Gamo. she is. Creepy paper. All over. It's all over. It's all over. That's the end of the video. It's all over. It's all over. This is Guillermo Sock. I ate him. <laughs> I'm a hellhound. This is all that's left of Guillermo. My name is Eva the Hellhound. <laughs> All right, so it looks like I will possibly just be using this shirt that I already have for Nandor so that we don't have to make anything. Um, I made this shirt for Hamilton and the King that Toby and I cosplayed several years ago. And I think it works perfect. I'm gonna make a little ascot to go around it so that it just is a little bit more like fancy looking. But beside that, I really like the way this jacket turned out. I have one issue and the little straps, um, they kind of like flop a little cause they're not like leather and they're not as strong as like a leather. So I need to figure out how I want to manage that. We thought about using fashion tape to just tape it to the side, but we're going to figure that out. And then next I will be making the cloak. 
I have this beautiful dark red um, velvet that I'm making the cloak out of and it's gonna be lined with this like gold satin that kind of looks like the dots on his um, tunic. And then we got this beautiful trim that I will be using and adding beads and embellishments to because again, like Nandor is so extra. I feel like it just works. So I will be making the cloak on the next video. If you like this content and you like seeing me make the costumes from what we do in the shadows, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I will be making Nadja for myself. I know most of you are here to see the gowns and the pretty things that I make for me, but Toby is fun and he's my partner and I wanna make stuff that we can wear together. So if you do wanna see Nadja, please stay tuned for that video that will be coming up after I finish Nandor. And um, my book is now available on Amazon and on my website. It is no longer in pre-order, it is out. I am now officially a, a published author. This is cool. Um, and thank you again to all of my patrons who make purchasing materials for this channel possible. I can't, I literally can't make costumes without fabric. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And until next time, may all your dreams come true.